countless tales, myths, and legends of the peoples of the world speak of underground cities and civilizations, as well as a vast network of connected tunnels all over the planet. If you ask any scientist about the construction of the Earth, he would answer you, inner core, outer core, mantle, upper mantle, crust. If you are interested in this topic, you can watch the video Amazing Things About the Earth That You Didn't Know. Many lovers of the paranormal, the unexplained, the esoteric, and the like will disagree with this and will introduce you to the theory that the Earth is hollow and strange creatures thrive in it, in underground cities. It is their point of view that we are about to examine in this video. Who are these strange creatures? How did they come to live inside the Earth? And where are the entrances to their underground cities? Stay with us until the end to find out the answers to these questions. The theory is based on the ancient legends of many cultures, which claim that there are races of people and entire civilizations that thrive in underground cities. Very often, these inhabitants of the world beneath our feet are considered technologically more advanced than us. Others believe that aliens are not from other planets, but were created by strange beings on Earth. But let's go back in time and look for traces of the existence of all this. Since ancient times, many peoples and different cultures have been convinced that there is another invisible world below us. In the myths, legends, and folklore of various tribes and civilizations, there are accounts of such a world, of an underground kingdom, or a place from which they originated. Examples of this are the underworld of Hades in ancient Greek mythology, the Scandinavian Svartalheim, the Christian Hell, the Jewish Sheol, and many more. Kabbalistic and Tibetan literature also mentions a similar dark place. The Tibetans tell a story that has been handed down from generation to generation, according to which there is an ancient city, Shambhala, which is located inside the earth. Indian legends tell that there is a world under the earth, and they are the first to come out of it, and their mission is to populate the surface. Eskimos also have a similar belief, coming from their folklore. According to the legends of many of the cultures listed above and thousands more unmentioned, there are entrances to the world beneath our feet that are scattered all over its surface, including around the two poles. Officially. The history of the hollow earth theory began in the 17th century when the famous English astronomer and mathematician Sir Edmund Halley first proposed this scientific hypothesis. After a series of observations of the earth's magnetic field, Halley came to the conclusion that the observed anomalies can only be explained by the fact that the earth consists of two spheres, an outer solid and an inner hollow, each of which has its own magnetic axis. At that time, however, this theory was refuted by other scientists and by the non-believing society. Two centuries later, the theory of the hollow earth is gaining popularity again. Although during these two centuries, there were persons periodically raising their voices in support of the theory. In the 19th century, famous scientists such as John Cleves Sims Jr. and Jeremiah N. Reynolds took up the subject again and insisted that our planet was completely empty inside. Sims not only claimed that the Earth was hollow, but that it consisted of different levels within its interior. Jules Verne's novel, Journey to the Center of the Earth from 1864, also played a big role in popularizing this theory. In the 20th century, Hitler and Nazi Germany took great interest in the hollow Earth theory. They took it so seriously that they organized as many as three missions to Antarctica. According to conspiracy beliefs, the emissaries of the Third Reich found what they came for. What's more, according to them, Hitler's mysterious disappearance after the end of the war happened precisely there. He was admitted to the other world, located under our feet. Now let's get back to our time. Two of the scientists' main proofs of their rightness are volcanic eruptions and gravity. However, they do not seem convincing at all according to the supporters of the theory of the hollow Earth. In June 2014, scientists study the Earth's mantle, but they don't go far. We have barely scratched the surface of the Earth. We drilled until 13 kilometers inland 
but had to stop because it got too hot. It is about 6,500 kilometers to the center of the Earth. We only reached 13. This is nothing, says John Brandenburg, one of the researchers in the mission. This gives hollow Earth proponents even more reason to say that ultimately no one can know and say for sure what's inside, and they refuse to accept the view that the scientific community is expressing. According to them, there is a whole other world inside the Earth, as were the beliefs of the ancient people. One of the most common names given to a society of underground dwellers is Agartha. After a little research, we found this information in The Smoky God, the biography of a Norwegian sailor named Olaf Johnson. Featured in Agartha, Secrets of the Underground Cities, the story written by Willis Emerson explains how Jensen's ship sailed through Earth's entrance to the surface of the North Pole. For two years, Jensen lived with the inhabitants of the Agartha colonies, which Emerson wrote were about 3.60 meters high and whose world was lit by a smoky central sun. It is very possible that these are the so-called giants that have been spotted on our lands thousands of years ago. You can watch a detailed video about the giants on our channel. According to the secrets, the inhabitants of Agartha were driven underground by the many upheavals and wars that occurred on the surface of the Earth. This happened as a result of the long Atlantean-Lemurian War and the use of thermonuclear weapons which ultimately led to the extinction of these two highly developed civilizations. The Sahara, the Gobi, the Australian outback, and the U.S. deserts are just a few examples of the extent of the devastation. Some cities were created as refuges for the people and as safe repositories for the sacred records, teachings, and technologies that these ancient cultures benefited from. There are known to be several entrances to the realm of Agartha around the world. Mammoth Cave in South Central Kentucky, USA. Mount Shasta, California, USA. The city of Ajarte Atelos is believed to lie beneath this mountain. Manaus, Brazil. Mato Grosso, Brazil. Posed cities believed to be located below this plain. Igauzu Falls on the border between Brazil and Argentina. Mount Epomeo, Italy. Himalayan Mountains, Tibet. The entrance to the underground city of Shanxi is guarded by Hindu monks. Mongolia, the underground city of Xinhua, is located under the border between Mongolia and China. Rama, India. Some claim that beneath the surface of this city is the long lost underground city of Rama, the pyramids of Giza, Egypt, King Solomon's Mines, North and South Pole. Unlike Christians, Buddhists in Central Asia believe that there is a wonderful land beneath the earth, Agartha and or Agartha. The people there are beautiful and much wiser than us. There reigns a king who can read human souls. For millennia, Tibetan scholars have spoken of an underworld, saying that they are in contact with the king of the underworld, who is also the supreme ruler of the entire planet. They speak and write of a tunnel connecting Tibet to the inner world, and note that there are many other entrances scattered throughout the earth. The capital of this inner world, and therefore the whole world, as they say, is Shambhala, where the ruler of the world is surrounded by superior beings who teach the representatives of humanity science, art, religion, and philosophy. In India, there is an ancient belief about an underground race of snake people who live in the cities of Patala and Bogati. According to legend, they waged war against the kingdom of Agartha. The Nagas, according to William Michael Mott's Assassins of the Deep, are a highly advanced race or species with highly developed technology. They also despise human beings, whom they are said to abduct, torture, and even eat. This is very reminiscent of the claims of an alien reptoid race, both in appearance and behavior. More details on the reptoids can be found in our video on alien races and humans. While the entrance to Bhogavati is somewhere in the Himalayas, believers claim that Patala can be entered through Sheshna's well in Benares, India. Mott writes that this entrance has 40 steps descending at the round end of a shaft at a closed stone door surmounted by a bas relief depicting a cobra. There is also a great mystic temple in Tibet called Patala 
which is said by the people to have an ancient cave at the top and a tunnel system that reaches across the Asian continent and beyond. The Nagas also have an affinity for water, and the entrances to their subterranean palaces are often thought to be hidden at the bottom of wells, deep lakes, and rivers. The Old Ones, in an Atlantis Rising article titled The Hollow Earth, Myth or Reality, Brad Steiger writes about the legends of the Old Ones, an ancient race that inhabited the upper world millions of years ago and then moved underground. The Old Ones, an extremely intelligent and a scientifically developed race, Steiger writes, have chosen to restructure their own environment below the surface of the planet and produce everything for their needs. The Old Ones are humanoids with lifespans much longer than humans. They often kidnap the human children of teachers and raise them as their own. One of the most controversial theories about Earth's inner inhabitants is the Shaver Mysteries. In 1945, Amazing Stories magazine published a story told by Richard Shaver, who claimed to have recently been a guest of what was left of an underground civilization. Although there were people who truly believed this story, many others suspected that Shaver was actually mentally ill. However, Richard, for his part, insists that his story is true. He claims that the old race, or Titans, came to this planet from another solar system in the prehistoric past. After a while, living on the surface, they realized that the sun was causing them to dry out prematurely. So they fled underground, building huge underground complexes in which to live. Eventually, they decided to seek a new home on a new planet due to the damaging radiation from the sun, leaving Earth. They leave behind underground cities inhabited by a minority of noble and human Theros, while most have degenerated over time into a mentally disabled and sadistic population known as Deros, short for harmful robots. Robots, Shaver clarifies, are not mechanical machines, but are compared to robots because of their emotionless behavior. It is these creatures that Shaver claims to have encountered. Despite the immense popularity of the Shaver Mysteries, the location of the entrance to this underworld is never revealed. Over queerly? Absolutely. But it is said that under the earth there is an inner core, an outer core, a mantle, an upper mantle, and a crust. Without anyone having been there and seen them, why then reject any other version of what lies beneath our feet? If we have to refer to facts as much as there is scientific evidence for one version, we can say that there is just as much for the other. We all know about the mythical sunken Atlantis, searched for by hundreds of explorers. However, we will tell you that 10 real existing sunken cities have been discovered, some of which have been preserved almost intact. Not only that, but if you are a thrill seeker, you can even dive in and immerse yourself in them. Ancient cities with a centuries-old history that preserved their streets and buildings deep underwater. In this video, we will take a look at some of the most interesting sunken cities that have been proven to exist. Shicheng, China Shicheng, China, also known as the Lion City, was not built overnight. It is assumed that the main foundation was erected somewhere between 25 to 200 AD, but construction in this city continued after that. The architecture suggests that it was completed during the Ming and Qing dynasties, around 1368. The ancient underwater city is located under Xiangdou Lake in Zhenxiang Province, China. According to the evidence found, the ancient city has been inhabited for centuries but is now mostly used as an underwater tourist attraction by tourists and diving experts. Shicheng is called the Lion City after the nearby Wuxi Mountain, Five Lion Mountain in Qiangdou Lake. On government orders, the city was deliberately flooded for industrialization purposes by the Chinese government in 1959 after a hydroelectric dam was needed for the needs of the Xinjiang province. Approximately 300,000 people have been displaced as a result of the project. Shicheng is believed to be the most significant Chinese city to have been preserved by water. Many of its homes, temple buildings, and paved roads are preserved intact, 40 meters below the water. In this way, Shicheng was protected from wind, rain, and sun damage. The city has five entrance gates, which is different from the traditional four. The streets of Shicheng contain 265 arches, 
with very well-preserved stonework, which date from 1777, and the city walls are from the 16th century. In 2001, the Chinese government organized an expedition to explore the remains of the lost metropolis. It was then that the city was rediscovered. In 2011, photos and graphics were released by the Chinese government, sparking interest from both the general public and researchers eager to explore the ancient city. Diving to Xingqingxin is only allowed the divers with experience in night and deep water diving. The Lost Villages of Ontario, Canada The Lost Villages in the Canadian province of Ontario are nine common villages and one inhabited island in the former towns of Cornwall and Osnabrück, now South Stormont, near Cornwall. They were sunk during the creation of the St. Lawrence Seaway in 1958. The flood was anticipated and planned as a result of construction, beginning in 1954, on the Moses Saunders Power Dam. In the weeks and months leading up to the flooding, families and businesses in the affected areas were relocated to the newly created municipalities of Long Salt and Ingleside. However, many residents feel that the market value compensation given to them is insufficient, as the Seaway plan has already lowered property values in the region. The town of Iroquois was also flooded, but instead of being abandoned, it was moved a mile and a half to the north. Another municipality, Morrisburg, was also partially submerged, but the area that was supposed to be flooded was moved to higher ground within the same city. In total, approximately 6,500 people have been displaced as a result of the project. 530 buildings have been moved, and countless other homes, schools, and businesses have been destroyed. At 8 a.m. on July 1, 1958, the flood began. Four days later, all the villages are completely underwater. Parts of New York's coastline were also flooded by the project, but no communities were affected on the American side of the river. A museum in Alt Park near Long Salt is dedicated to the submerged settlements, including several salvaged historic buildings. In some places, sidewalks and buildings can still be seen under the water, and when the water level is lower, parts of the villages float like ghosts. Some high points in the flood zone remain above the water as islands. At a large stage, they were connected to the Long Salt Highway. Port Royal, Jamaica, Sin City, the City of Sins. That's what they called the locations in the southeastern part of Jamaica, Port Royal. In the second half of the 17th century, the city became a byword for low morals and brigandage. At the same time, it was the center of shipping and trade in the Caribbean. Main port to the pirates employed to plunder the ships of the Spaniards when the smaller European powers did not dare to fight them directly. Nowadays, Port Royal is a relatively quiet fishing village at the end of the 29-kilometer-long stretch of beach along the Kingston Extension. However, things were not exactly like that in the 17th century. Jamaica was controlled by the Spanish for over 150 years because of its strategic location. In 1655, however, it was attacked by English forces and quickly became a profitable asset. The English did not have many men to protect the island, and then Governor Edward O'Doyle was forced to rely on pirates. This, along with the revenue from the slave, sugar, and lumber trade, made Port Royal the most corrupt city in the world. Noted for a quarter of its buildings being bars and brothels, the town quickly became wealthy, and legends began to abound about the pirates' insatiable thirst for opulence and debauchery. The city attracted famous names that crossed the seas at that time, there they spent the spoils on a hedonistic lifestyle. These pirates had the freedom to do whatever they wanted. This comes from the fact that they were considered the protectors of Jamaica. The authorities had no choice but to turn a blind eye to them, local historian Peter Gurdon told BBC. On the morning of June 7, 1692, the atmosphere in Port Royal and the city itself changed forever. A huge earthquake destroys most of the city. After that, Port Royal was never the same. Nearly two-thirds of the city is submerged underwater. The earthquake destroyed many of the buildings, and about 5,000 people died during the disaster or shortly after from injuries or disease. Many believe that the city was chosen for punishment by God because of its wickedness. An effort was made to rebuild Port Royal, but in 1703 it was again devastated, this time by fire. It was then hit repeatedly by hurricanes and more earthquakes in the following years. Sometime after 1774, it began its existence as a small, quiet fishing village to this day. The pirates flocking there with their ships loaded with various objects and valuables turned today's Port Royal into one of the richest archaeological sites in the world.
submerged eight meters underwater. Many important artifacts, documents, and objects were found, from which key conclusions about life in the 17th century are made. Exploration and discovery of the underwater port city continue to this day. Scientists are amazed to find new objects constantly shedding light on this and earlier periods of humanity. Pavlo Petri, Greece Pavlo Petri is the oldest underwater city in the world. In the 1960s, the sunken buildings of Pavlo Petri, a Bronze Age Greek city, were discovered. Since then, constant research has been conducted to unravel the secrets that are hidden under the water. Nicholas Fleming of the Institute of Oceanography at the University of Southampton discovered the submerged settlement. It is located in the Peloponnese region of southern Greece, near a small town called Pavlo Petri. The ancient city is believed to be around 5,000 years old. The interesting thing about this underwater city is that it is located only a few meters deep, which makes the work of researchers much easier. Before Fleming, the geologist Folkian Negris was able to identify the city as early as 1904. After Fleming rediscovered the site, it was inspected by another team of underwater archaeologists in 1968. In 2009, the University of Nottingham, under the leadership of John C. Henderson, launched a five-year project to investigate the site. Archaeological research is extremely complex due to the investigation of very old and delicate sites, as well as the preservation of ancient objects. Also in the case of Pablo Petri, all this must be done underwater. The rediscovery of the city, as well as the use of the state-of-the-art scanning technologies, have succeeded in bringing back to life an ancient city that was about to disappear due to the lack of protection. Pavlo Petri is the first lost city to be searched digitally using 3D sonar mapping technology. The quality of the resulting images is unique, reconstructing the city to a level never seen before. The three-dimensional visualization rediscovers for researchers the exact picture of what the place looked like 5,000 years ago. Analyzes made on the sea floor have identified thousands of objects, telling what everyday life was like in Pavlo Petri 3000 BC. Experts indicate that the city sank around 1100 BC as a result of an earthquake, erosion, sea level rise, or possibly a tsunami about 5,000 years ago. Life in Pablo Petri was marked by prosperity. This is also evidenced by the city's incredible architecture. Roads, two-story houses, temples, a cemetery, and a complex water management pipeline system. Most alleged locations for Atlantis are in or near the Mediterranean Sea. Islands like Sardinia, Crete, Santorini, and so on. The dating of the city and its high development makes many people wonder if Pablo Petri is not related to the story of Plato's Atlantis. For now, however, this remains only talk and speculation. Share with us in a comment what type of topics you want to see videos on in our channel. Thank you for your great support and activity. More interesting knowledge you can find in our channel. Don't forget to share this video and subscribe to the channel.